Building your vocabulary. 11 critical tips to make sure you do it in a way that helps you. From TOEFL Talk with Noteful, episode number 16, where today we talk about tips and tricks, but we also have critical training and personal support to make sure you get your dream score. So I'm Joseph from Noteful, excited to be with you. And the inspiration behind this episode is just in working with you and a lot of other students, the idea of, for the speaking and writing sections, being able to express yourself more clearly, for the reading and listening, improving your comprehension, so that you have an easier time focusing, so that you feel more improvement week by week, and so that you really boost your score. So vocabulary is interesting because you don't want to over-focus on it, because you want to be making sure that you're improving your TOEFL strategy, your TOEFL skills, your academic English overall, you know, all the things that we train. But you also definitely need to have vocabulary as a regular part of your studies until you pass. So these 11 tips are for you to guide you to make sure that this part of your studies are really supporting your success. So the first thing is to have a nice perspective that this is for all English exams. I mean, any exam you're going to take. For example, several of you watching need this for licensing. You need it for graduate school, undergraduate school. So a vocabulary that's strong is going to help you for the rest of your life. It's going to make your life easier because it's a very different experience when you don't know maybe one out of every 20 words compared to one out of every 10 or one out of every five when you're reading or listening to something. So make sure you know that to kind of inspire you, not only for the TOEFL, but for those of you who have to take the GRE, even for some pharmacists, FPGEE, and for nurses, you know, the NAPLEX, like so many different exams that you have to take, very helpful for that. So let that inspire you, give you the right mindset. And speaking of that, tip number two, so number one, for all exams. Remember, it's for all exams. Number two, that this is for forever. So kind of a unique expression, but for forever. Just having been working with students like you over the past 10 plus years, right, helping you get your dream scores, you're a special group. You're Almost all of you are in a new country working to improve your lives, uh, developing skills in another language some this is your third or fourth maybe even more so i i just noticed so much investment in your success right now and how after you pass your toefl which you will all of a sudden it can go to zero so i just want to in put in your head the possibility that you can be thinking about this vocabulary habit for the rest of your life because it's very manageable uh, it takes effort and energy, but it can become a part of your life and a positive one. So especially for those of you who have a test within, you know, where you have to study for two or more weeks, which is almost everybody or a large number. Some of you are just taking the exam maybe this Saturday, you know, in just 10 days. So there's not enough time to build enough vocabulary in a meaningful way for the future. So, but if you're on a journey of two or more weeks, especially if you, you know, you need to improve 10 or more points on your TOEFL or two to four points on any section, it's a really good mindset that I'm going to build this habit for when I pass my TOEFL and beyond. And I have this little expression here, less effort to keep your garden, because you're going to build an amazing habit of being able to look at words, find the definition. It's really a skill. Find example sentences that work for you. Visualize it in your head. You know, build your own skill at how quickly you can memorize things. So that's like a garden. You're planting a seed of something that's going to give you fruit, a reward over time. So just to give you that sense that you're doing something valuable for your future, for your career, for right now to improve your score. So you can think that it'll be a little sad if at the end of your TOEFL journey, we just kind of leave the garden and everything, all the seeds you planted just start to die, right? So this way it gives you the positive mentality. The next thing is make sure you have a vocab journal, a physical journal. Uh, several reasons for this. One of the main ones, probably the most important, it, well, two, organization, because 
with you can have apps, you can have virtual things, absolutely. But when you physically write things down, it's just it still tends to be a bit easier. I mean, some of you have the integration right with virtual so strong, so no problem. But when you write it physically, just the pressure and the ink or the pencil just reinforces the spelling, reinforces the pronunciation, reinforces the meaning because it's like every letter you write, it's slow, it's not fast, gives you more connection with the word. So it's a very good training process. Like I wouldn't be having you do something with a physical notebook in preparing for different sections, but for vocab, it has a lot of value. But definitely use both, like kind of every resource. But as we say, ideally, you have six journals or six packets of paper, one for your TOEFL mindset about planning your studies, and then one for the reading, listening, speaking, and writing. So that's about five. And then one for your vocab. So it's an easy resource. You could go back to it, flip the pages. So really important to have. So I hope that you have that with you now because in every video you watch, you're going to build this powerful skill. In every podcast you listen to, you'll you know hear one word and you'll be like, you know what, I want to study that word. Then you put it in your journal. So I hope you have it with you now. Uh, the next thing I think is really important, tip number four, is feel comfortable building it on your own. Now, the reason is because I notice that there's a tendency when students hear vocab to kind of have the second thought be a vocab list. What's a good list you recommend? From my experience, the best vocab is from your everyday life and TOEFL studies. Right now, this video you're watching, the material you're going to study, uh, by the end of these 11 tips, you're going to 100% have no problem. Like You'll have more words than you can possibly study for the rest of your life. Because everybody, myself, I mean, there's an infinite amount of vocab, but you, what you want to do is master the vocab that's a part of what you're doing. And lists are strong, like we have our vocab programs, but in ideally it's just feel confident to build it on your own. Now lists are great, but treat the words as if they weren't in one. So what I mean by that is a list and that's why in our courses for vocab, we try to integrate listening exercises and lectures and readings because when you find a word in a list, I mean, th it's presented kind of alone and maybe with a definition that's really trying to make an easy definition to memorize. So it can be helpful, but you lose a lot of the power of what happens when you search for the word online. And it's not a dictionary physical because that's slow but online really nice because you can use google you can search the word find the meaning get three or four different dictionaries with multiple example sentences on google we'll talk about this you can use google images so you have pictures to help you with visualizing the meaning of the word understanding it better so when you read and you search for the meaning of the word on your own, you can, it's just helping you because you're saying the word to your brain multiple times. You're typing it multiple times. You're writing it multiple times. You're reading different ways of expressing the same thing. So in the process of studying the word, you're more effectively memorizing it. You'll remember it better over time. So build lists on your own and from the material you have. And even if you use a list, Keep searching for additional definitions, additional example sentences, because that effort will reward you by learning the words faster and for the long term so that they really help you when you read, listen, and speak and write in your exam. Number five, as you kind of heard me mention, mix definitions with drawings. And that's the great thing about a physical journal, because what you can do is you search for the word and then you look for images. and it's so helpful. And then you can draw the image. Kind of fun. Maybe we don't draw well. I know I don't draw so well. So this that effort of connecting your brain even more is going to help you to memorize that word, understand that word better. So when you hear it in speech, your brain has a faster ability to connect its meaning. So sometimes when you learn words, we all know there's like a delay. 
when you're really learning them and they're not right at the easy recall, you'll hear the word and then you'll try to remember it. And if you're listening to a lecture, two or three more words pass. So it's like we, in order to get the value of vocab for the listening, the speaking, and the writing section, not so much for the reading because you can look at the word for a few seconds, it's really necessary to have like mastery of the vocab word. So make a drawing has no words to it. So you're learning to associate the word with a meaning instantly. So it's not words. So one word is not making you think of more words. One word is making you think of an image. Also on the speaking section, you, we tend to express ourselves intuitively like we're just talking or writing naturally so we need some very confident connection with the language so you need your brain to have the word connection and the visual connection and a lot of times we speak from visual memory like think about what you were doing before you started this video or think about what you were doing yesterday in the morning right take you're you're picturing it right you're not thinking in words, you're thinking in images. So you want to give your brain a chance to, when you think in images, to have these words that you're learning pop up. Then you can speak more instantly, more easily, more smoothly, more confidently. So really important. And so a couple of tips is you can have your, your drawings, like you can have maybe one part of your notebook, just be the drawings. You can even print out pictures from you know, Google images, and you just look at the images and that's your flashcard. Like that's what, okay, that image meant this, that image meant that, and any image that you don't remember, you know, you go back to your list of words and then, oh, that's what that image meant. And that's really helpful because that's what makes flashcards powerful too, that quick back and forth between, do I know the meaning? No, I don't. Okay, let me go back to what it means. Uh, the other thing that's really helpful virtually is on Google, when you do Google the word and you do images and you find an image you like for the word, you can save that picture in your computer and you can have a little folder in your computer for vocab and you can call it TOEFL vocab or just vocab so it supports your mindset of vocab forever and you just put the images in there. And then you just open that folder, open the images, and just look through and start to remember the words. And whatever you don't remember, you just go to your journal and you look for the word. So again, different ways because it takes effort and energy to master vocab. So it's a really good investment for your communication, for your TOEFL. The other thing that's really powerful is you start training your brain to think word image almost instantly any word image and for the reading listening speaking and writing you're being tested on your ability to learn in the moment so the TOEFL is trying to give you basic topics throughout your entire exam but trying to give you topics that are unique enough that you don't have experience with them or or on average maybe throughout the whole exam, every student only has experience with 10 or 20% of the topics. So it's like everyone is dealing with 80% of information they don't know. So how do you learn information in the moment? It's really helpful when what you read or what you hear is something you see in your mind. You actually picture what's being described. That tremendously improves your comprehension. So all these things come together to really help you. So tip number six, English to English definitions. Definitely it's tough, it's not easy, but at this level, definitely do it. The main reason is because there are so many online that are, so, that are really well written and clear that you're gonna be missing something if you don't read the definition of an English word in English. The other thing is, Remember how we said you, you can build your own list? The, the definition of the word and the examples, totally normal to give you more words you don't know. But related words, because it's powerful when you learn, okay, here's a word I don't know, and sometimes it's frustrating, 
And there's like two words I don't know in the definition, so this didn't help. So I got to search these two words, and now those words in their definition have words I don't know. But this is a word group, like a powerful group of words that are closely linked. So when you hear any of those words, you have more understanding of them because they're related in some way. The other thing is definitions when you online, you know, so many online dictionaries, you get a few good ones you like. I don't really at this moment feel I need to list them because you just go on Google, you see things like Merriam-Webster's and so many other dictionaries. When you go to those dictionaries, they're really written with care. So the definition is often anywhere from three to probably like five to maybe 12 words. So those, those words really explain something clearly. If you get a good dictionary like Merriam-Webster's that I like, I'll make sure to include the link below to it, but there are several others. You actually build your ability to explain things well, because many of us have the experience, I know the word, but I can't explain it, which is normal. I have that. We all do. But the more words that are like that, the more trouble we have explaining ourselves clearly because we struggle to explain basic things, simple things. And for the speaking section, that's so important, and for the writing section as well. So when you read the definition in English, it's actually training you for clear communication. And that's why I say reference more than one dictionary online, get a few ways of how the definition is explained, and read the example sentences. Number seven, that brings us to seven words a day. So very quickly, you'll be able to put a list of 25 or 30 words you don't know. But for your time to manage it well, you want to spend only about 10 to 15% of your study time building your vocab because there are so many other things to do. Limit yourself to seven words a day because it adds up fast. Very quickly, you'll have so many words that is tough for you to remember. So seven words a day we found is ideal. Um, integrate review days. So maybe every fourth day is a day where all you do is review some vocab words that you have forgotten or the list that you have before. And it also works if you do seven words every other day. But it's a really good pattern to have in your mind really simple seven words a day from now on or seven words a day every other day. And then you just think to yourself every Every third or fourth time, every time I get the feeling like I've forgotten a lot of words, I have one or two review days. So very comfortable with that as a, as a habit and a process. The other thing is, so when are you going to see the value of this? I think you're going to really feel positive because there's something really special in my experience and working with students and myself Whenever you learn about 250 new words, like you get them in your brain, I think you're going to have a wow moment where it's like you keep all day, you keep hearing the words you studied. And it's so positive, especially on the TOEFL, because the TOEFL is so demanding that there are a few things where you can experience improvement as quickly. So it'll be motivating that after 250 words, it's just like, wow. That person used the word, I studied. I would not have known that word well if I didn't study it. Wow, this movie, it used that word. This TOEFL reading used that word. Hey, this is good. Like, I'm going to keep doing this. And it depends on where you, at, where you are at right now with your vocabulary. You might experience that as soon as 100 words or maybe as much as 500 words if you already have a strong vocabulary. But... Definitely 250 words is the average. So that, I mean, if you're an academic student, I mean, I think it makes sense because it feels good. You have that wow moment. And let that motivate you to study more and to see, yes, vocab, I improve, it works faster, and trust that it'll happen for other sections too. You're reading, listening, speaking, and writing, right? So it's having an influence there. So number nine, adjust. I'm giving you the tips of my own experience building my vocab, um, continuing to build my vocabulary every day with this habit, and also just with working with so many of you, you know, over 
I think now 13, 14 years. So there's, there's always going to be some adjustment for what works for you. Maybe five words a day is more practical to do for the rest of your life. Maybe 10 or 14 words because you love it and it's fun and it gets you energized. Uh, maybe you like more highlighting ebooks, right? You don't like writing in a journal. You like having your ebook and highlighting it so that you can scroll through and cite, see your words in context, right? In the sentences they're used in. Maybe you love flashcards. You love your phone, your apps, you know, whatever it is, the frequency of review. Maybe you want to review every other day. Maybe you want to do two or three weeks of new words and then one week of nothing but review. Right? Find what works for you and you'll notice you'll always be adjusting. Like if you really keep this pattern every month, every other month, you'll be doing something different to help you build your vocab and, and really give yourself confidence and ability in the language for your professional career and your dream score. And so with that, we go to number 10, slow words. So slow words are, are fun and frustrating, but those are the words, isn't it amazing? Some words, like you almost feel it. That I'm, I'm going to forget that in two seconds. And you do. Or, wow, I can't believe I've studied that for the last three weeks and I still have a little bit of trouble remembering it. I just wanted to share this tip because it's normal. Don't let that frustrate you. Some words come from, you know, Latin. So as a root, so if you speak Spanish, French, or, or, or different kind of you know, Portuguese, you'll remember it better. Uh, some words have roots that have a kind of relationship or a sound pattern similar to the, your native language or other words you've learned. And some words don't have anything. And for whatever reason, they're hard to learn. So I would just encourage you not to think there's anything wrong with that. It's very normal. And some words are amazing because you read it once and it's almost in your brain. So I would just recommend keep the tough words in your regular study cycle. Like you know how you have seven words a day. Once it's been a week or two and you identify a stubborn word, a word that just your brain keeps letting go of, just introduce that. You know, learn six, <coughs> excuse me, learn six words a day and put that word as the seventh. So every time you're studying, you're reviewing it. And again, this is that adjusting process. But I wanted to say that because it's tough. That's normal. And now tip number 11. So I would say three to six for life. So what does that mean? So you can expect that after about three to six months of this, words that you didn't know before are going to become yours. Even a year or two later without study, you'll remember them. You're not going to experience that or understand that unless you've already been doing this until two or three years from now, but I want to prepare you for that. And if you think about that, that's powerful because that means your investment now, three to six months, can just naturally, without too much effort, give you benefit for years to come. So I just want to encourage you with that for life, right? Three to six months of this kind of work will boost your vocabulary for life. Of course, you'll forget words if you stop all of a sudden, but your effort will not go for nothing. But if it's like one or two months, kind of less than three, yeah, it's really easy for it to disappear. And I would just encourage you to at least think to yourself, if you're not going to study in the future, by having your, your notebook, maybe in a year after you defeat your TOEFL, you'll look through it. You'll see all the words you don't know and they'll come back to you. So suddenly that can be the journal that you review every year, every six months, because time flies and you get that benefit again of those words because it's easier for you to remember. And I just put that word kind of because, you know, our brains and everything, they're all it's it's not easy to keep a memory forever that you build especially by force through this pattern but with all the things that we're doing it'll help so i hope these 11 tips were valuable for you because they're 11 and they're intense i feel like a good review is to go through them right rather than give a review of all 11. so i hope you wrote some down review this video and most importantly now which tip will you apply so leave that in the comments section, write that for yourself, because with 11 tips, it's hard to do them all today. 
but definitely one. I'm sure there's one that was maybe something you didn't focus on before or that you can focus on more. And you can make a commitment to that one tip today. So if you leave it in the comments, it'll be great to see, see what you got value from. I hope you found it helpful. And of course, as always, thumbs up to you watching from beginning to end, working hard for your success and being dedicated to your improvement. If you like this video and it helped, you know, hit the thumbs up, keeps us energized and motivated, lets us know which videos are kind of helping more than others, if you found it helpful. Uh, below you see a link to our Facebook group, more content there to help you with your TOEFL. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already to make sure you're notified of the videos that are coming. And finally, if you're ready to keep working together for your TOEFL Dream Score, remember we have plenty of courses if you're not already a student. And for those of you who are, you can quickly move into studying your material, continuing on your path to your Dream Score by clicking on the link below. So there's where you'll see how to work with us, how to choose the right program, and be on track to your success. So once more, Joseph from Noteful, happy to be with you. Wish you great a great day and no keep doing what you're doing your dream score is coming stay strong until next time bye bye